Welcome to the Springfield Art Museum. I'm Sarah Bohr, the curator here at the museum. Today we're going to go on a brief virtual tour of our special exhibition, This and That, Cartoons by Bob Palmer. This exhibit features 150 original cartoons penned by Palmer over his 38-year career at the Springfield News Leader. Beginning in 1953 and running through 1991, Palmer covered everything from local politics, state politics, national events, international issues, cultural issues, as well as life in these Ozarks. The exhibition is arranged thematically, beginning with those topics that he covered that were near and dear to Springfield's heart, and moves on to the national, international events and cultural issues. When curating this exhibition, I had two specific goals in mind. One to both show the range of Palmer's 38-year career and the very many different issues that he covered, and also to look at those issues that are still facing Americans today to give context and perspective to today's concerns. Issues such as the environment, gun control, racism, reapportionment of voting districts were all top of mind for many voters just a few weeks ago as we entered the polls. The exhibition was specifically timed to coincide with this presidential election year to give us that perspective and to see how much things have changed and maybe how much things have stayed the same. The exhibition runs through November 29th and is free to the public. We hope you'll come and see the show. Shortly, I will be joined by one of Bob's sons, Rob Palmer, and we'll talk a little bit more specifically about several cartoons on view. Thank you. So I selected this cartoon for the show mostly because I felt like it was looking behind the curtain and you were seeing the cartoonist in his own elements and how he's sort of revealing the dilemma of being a cartoonist at times. And I can only imagine as people, this one is actually about city manager John Bush, so as people locally changed out, he knew them personally, but also had to find a way to portray them um, in a cartoon that was recognizable. So I liked the idea of seeing who is actually telling you these stories and maybe the personal dilemma that he might have faced as he picked who to caricature or who to talk about in his cartoons. This is kind of an interesting cartoon right here because my dad drew, drew himself and he always made sure he had a big fluffy beard. And as we were talking earlier, it's always, it was always difficult for my father to, to characterize someone so, or to, to cartoon them correctly so people would identify them. So he always would pick out one characteristic. For instance, if he had, if he had been drawing an Obama, was a president, he would have drawn really big ears. I just know he would have. Uh, so I always looked for some characteristic, a mustache, the way they, they did their hair. Reagan, for instance, if you want to talk about Reagan, he always did that really funky, greasy hair that, that uh, President Reagan had. And so he would always try to, to do that so that every time he would do it, it came back to the same political uh, person. He would do the same thing so you would immediately recognize who he was talking about. Here's one of my dad's cartoons involving the environment. My dad was a, definitely a very uh, strong environmentalist. He always gardened his whole life. He loved the outdoors, whether it was fishing or whatever. But beyond gardening, once he, he gardened for his whole life, and he, when he retired, he became a beekeeper as well. And he really became in touch with nature at that point in time in his life. But you can see that his works throughout his career focusing on pollution, he was very pleased with the exception of the EPA and other entities to protect the environment. And he, you'll see a number of his cartoons where he really criticizes the oil industry and other uh, industries that polluted our environment. So I selected this work as well as many others about the environment because obviously that is still an issue that we're dealing with, um, even maybe more important today with growing climate change and some of the um, emergency issues that we've been dealing with with the environment and I know it's been a hot-button topic for the last political elections 
And so I was both amazed and frustrated to see so many cartoons that Bob had created where these issues were obviously being talked about back in the 60s and 70s, but we haven't really changed our practices to do much to help. Um, so I thought it was very timely to still see how Bob was viewing the environment then, and I, I could tell, I think, that he was definitely pro-environment, um, and this was a good way for us to kind of talk about where are we today in compared to that.